Are you afraid? Before we get started with today's video, two thirds of my subscribers are actually subscribed. If you like this video, after you're done watching, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Also feel free to leave a like or a comment. It boosts the video just a little bit each time, and every little thing that you do helps the channel. Enjoy the video. This started about 10 years ago when I was still in high school. While the bulk of it didn't happen until years later, I met the man that would try to ruin my life and run it as if I were a trophy. I met Frankie in the ninth grade. We didn't have a whole lot to do with one another then, but we were part of the same friend group. There were many of us, and so it wouldn't have been long until we at least met each other. He was really sweet when we finally did meet, but there was definitely something off about him. I figured that he was high most of the time, and that's what gave him his absent-minded demeanor. Skipping all the way through high school, I graduated, got myself a decent job to help my parents pay bills, and I got settled into a pretty comfortable routine. I thought about going to college, but even more so, I wanted a boyfriend. After high school, most of the friends that I knew scattered, like I'm sure a lot of people experience. I didn't have anyone around anymore aside from the few people I saw here and there. Well, one day I decided to go see an old friend and have a small drink with her. She had Frankie over as well. I'd been around him on occasion since high school, but this would be our first real interaction alone. My friend had already gotten a little drunk and soon passed out. Night fell as Frankie and I sat there and talked, having more and more drinks together. I fell for him that night, probably because of the drinks that we had. Later on, I started hanging out with him a little more on my days off. I felt like he could probably be my first real relationship, and I was thrilled when he asked me out. I accepted, and we became a couple. Everything was great at the beginning. He was a boyfriend I could be proud of. I introduced him to my parents shortly after, and they did like him. We went out to things together, and hung out to drink and watch movies together. I'd even talk to him at work when I had a chance and nobody was looking. You could definitely say that I found my match. I moved in with Frankie in that time. I dated Frankie around three months before he finally said something absolutely confusing to someone else about me. Someone had said something nice about me, and he told them that I was a bitch when nobody was around. That stuck in my head for a little while, as it was pretty much a knife that he had stuck me with. It hurt a lot. I opted out of asking him why he said that, because I didn't want to prove his point that I was a bitch when nobody was looking. I had no clue what he meant by that, because I was always nice and cheerful around him. I thought it might have been a bad joke that had gone wrong. Maybe he fucked up the joke and felt too embarrassed that it came out the wrong way. I was too afraid to ask about it, so I let it go. Later on, he'd made more snide comments about me to other people, confirming that it was in fact not a joke and he actually meant it. He started to become more toxic to me then as well. At the time, I still believed we loved each other, and was caught off guard by him bringing up a problem to me. I'd done nothing wrong that I knew of, and he started blaming me for things. In my head, I thought genuinely that I'd caused something to go wrong, and he made me apologize for it. He was pretty good at shifting blame to me, and making me think that I actually did cause whatever it was that went wrong at the time. A few times of that happening, and I started to get scared that I was going to ruin something again at any moment, and disappoint him. One time I'd said something to someone online that I thought was perfectly innocent, and it got back to him. It really wasn't even about him, but he said he 
felt the effects of it. It made me show him my phone and text to help him explain to me how it was my fault. All that time, it was his attitude getting him into trouble, and he was extremely skilled at shifting blame. I don't mean to say that twice, but this man was very intelligent in that way. Once he'd established that I couldn't be trusted not to be supervised, he started in on my friends. I only had a few friends that I would see on occasions, as I said. He started trying to tell them what to do. I don't know what exactly he was trying to accomplish, but he'd always interject aggressively and tell them how to do things his way, and if they didn't do it his way, he'd call them stupid for not listening. None of them would put up with that, and so he basically ran them off. He isolated me to the point where I had nobody, and I was only alone with him, feeding me toxicity. He even made me quit my job to stay home while he worked. He said that he didn't want me going out anywhere because I'd screw something up and it would sidetrack him. I really did believe that I was causing him so much grief. When you're put in that situation and demeaned for that long, it's easy to slip into that mindset. When you're mentally healthy, you really can't see how it's possible for someone to get like that until it's too late. I understand fully how someone would have a question, such as how I got into believing that I was the cause of so many bad things happening to him. The answer is that it's way too complicated to follow a direct path to understanding it over a long period of time. So I lived like this for nearly two years, and finally someone woke me up to it. My friend said that it was pissing her off that I was in a situation like this and she cussed me out for it. It wasn't at all nice what she said, but she woke me up, and I don't at all think she made a bad decision. A few days later, I realized everything he was doing to me, and I realized how depressed and shitty I was feeling. I left and went to my parents' house. I really didn't think he would come after me, but he in fact did. When he finally found out where I was somehow, he showed up there and demanded that I get in the car and go home with him. Having no way else around it that I could see, I had to go back with him. My parents weren't home at the time, and so they couldn't help. When we got back, he locked me in the bedroom for a day and told me it was for my protection. What he didn't know was that when he left for work, I'd smash the window and crawl out. I had a family member that lived in another state. I went ahead and smashed the window, left him a really fucked up note, and walked away from the house to go find some place where I could log into Facebook and tell them I was coming down. That's not exactly how it went, but I made it down there. My girl made the trip up to the state where I was at, but in the meantime... I kind of homeless my way around the area for two days. I told my parents later on what happened while they were gone, and they were absolutely livid. They came down to where I was to see me and make sure that I was alright, but I had to talk Dad down from going and paying Frankie a final visit. They had no idea what was going on in the time span I was dating Frankie, and thought he was a pretty normal, healthy person but they were shocked to find out otherwise. I told them I was staying down in that state, and I might move back a few years later, but I was finally away from him, and I needed him to move on and fade away from me. More importantly, I needed to recover mentally from what I'd gone through, and I had to do it with the fear that he'd come after me again. It's been a bumpy road since then, but I feel a lot better now than I did. I haven't moved back yet, but we'll just have to see what happens. I'm a dude, and back in high school, I dated a very stupid girl that went completely crazy on me. I met her at one of the teenager hangout spots, and her name was Lauren. 
This girl was a bit scatterbrained, and I believe it was intentional on her part. She didn't want to look like a nerd knowing things and shit. She even told me it's not attractive for her to look smart to other people. Okay, whatever, girl. I was sort of pressured into dating her, and she was me. Our friend group ran on peer pressure, and it didn't result in a lot of good things happening. So Lauren and I dated for about three weeks, and in that time, we weren't really close. We were hardly even friends. She and a few others came over to my house to hang out and just be stupid teenagers. This is where things began. The day they all came over, she created a problem and got all sobby and sulky about it. Really, everyone agreed that what happened was her fault. I don't even remember what that was all about. Her first thought was to take a little safety pin and scratch her legs lightly to gain attention from everyone. I guess she thought we'd care that she was doing that. Well, one of her cucks did. A guy we called Space ran right over to comfort her. That night, she stayed over with us, and her little cringy vampire obsession came out. She wanted everyone to believe that her fangs hadn't grown in yet, and she needed to bite to make that happen. She bit almost everyone that night. She ended up biting our friend Jamie, who told Lauren multiple times not to bite her, and ended up slapping her so hard, her feet came off the ground, and she did a 900. I exaggerate, but Tony Hawk eat your heart out. There was air in a twist. She tried to get sympathy from all of us, but none of us gave her any. She ended up sulking again and scratching light lines into her legs. Later on the next morning when I was asleep, she figured that she was too pretty for anyone to be mad at her, and she did things with two of us, me not being one of them. I absolutely did not mind that I wasn't one of them, and I wasn't mad at the guys receiving. When I woke up, I told him that he could have her, and that's when she turned on me. After they all left, she got to work on the lies that she would later on ruin my friendships with. She told all of my friends that I hit her. The ones that didn't care to hear that, she told them that I said things about them that I didn't, and I would never say. I lost a lot of friends in a little bit of time since most of them were cucks and would believe her over me. Whatever. If they were going to be that way, I didn't need them as friends. I'm not really into the concept of frenemies. So she stalked me for a little while after that, watching closely to what I did and where I went. She'd have people spy on me and tell her what I was doing. One day at a hangout spot that I frequently went to with friends that I still had, old friends of mine tried to jump me. They waited until I was mostly alone to try, but the friends that I had with me backed me up and it just became a fight. I found out later on that it was started by her rallying them up and having them try to go after me. She even tried to attack me but ended up failing because at that point, everyone was already tired of her shit and had mostly grown apart. Feeling pissed off at most everyone but one or two people, I started staying home where it was safe. On very rare occasions, someone would pull me out of the house, but only to go out for a few hours and then go back home. It's great to be a gamer in times like that. Well, after high school ended, I continued this trend of staying home and just being by myself most of the time. I stopped even hanging out with a few friends that I had left because I found myself a job and still stayed home most of the time playing video games. I met a few people along the way, but for the most part, I'm still mostly a recluse. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. 
Who is that behind you?